Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd Ayyul Ahbab Continue on in our series of some of the of the boundaries of our character Some of the characteristics Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala May Allah bless him and his teacher Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah with Jannat al-Fardos And the scholars of righteousness throughout history. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Ayyul Ahbab, the third characteristic Shaykh al-Islam rahmatullah mentioned was al-Hasid, was being, having the jealousy in which you want the blessings of someone else to be removed. For example, when you have a situation, maybe a, a, an individual they see another person, who has a very beautiful wife. A man who sees another man who has a beautiful wife. And the first man, by looking at the other individual's family, his wife, he's jealous. He says, why does so-and-so have such a beautiful wife? He doesn't have such and such wealth. His status is not like such and such. My status is like this. I make more money than him or whatever. Uh, his wife is so beautiful and this and that and the other to where he covets the other man's wife. And to such a level he wants her to be divorced from him. Possibly not even so he can marry her, but just out of an evil characteristic of jealousy, of hasid. These are real situations, ayyul ahbab, that we have to be aware of and we have to be warned about and we have to avoid by any means. And likewise, the situation of a person who sees another individual who has wealth and you don't want their wealth, you don't want to have the wealth like them to spend in the cause of law, but instead you just want, you just don't like the fact that they have all that wealth and you want it to be taken from them. This characteristic, ayyul ahbab, in our culture, we call it being a hater. Hating that someone else prospers and benefits, and you just want to get rid of their benefit. For the sake of them not having it. That's it. That's it. You don't even want their benefit, but you just want them not to have it. Ayyul ahbab, Islam detests this characteristic. Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said about al-Hasid, he said jealousy, he says, has its limitation as well as the other characteristics we mentioned. They have their limitation, their bounds within the shara, which is praiseworthy competition. So sometimes it can be praiseworthy competition. This is not Hasid, in fact. It's not the, uh, it's not wanting to remove that from someone. That's never praiseworthy. But when it's competitive, as, as Sheikh al-Islam explains, we'll see what he's talking about when it's, it's something that's beneficial. He says, it has its limitation, which is praiseworthy competition to achieve perfection and self-dignity in order to prevent his opponent from surpassing him. When this particular quality exceeds its limit, it becomes transgression and aggression as he is seeking by such a character to remove in any bounty or blessing bestowed upon the one he is jealous of, while being diligent about harming him, subhanAllah. And when this character falls short of its limit, it is considered belittling and something that is contemptible, meaning that it's hated, and causes his aspirations to weaken and his self-esteem to lower. And then he gives us the example what the Prophet Sallallahu said. Before we get into that part, let's explain what, what the Shaykh, what Shaykh al-Islam is saying, Rahimahullah Ta'ala here. So he says that sometimes it's praiseworthy characteristic when uh, the jealousy produces a, a kind of competition to do good. So-and-so, man, he prays this much. You don't want his prayer to be removed, but you want to do as much good as he does or she does. So you begin to pray the night prayer and, and do good deeds to come closer to your Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a good type of competition. 
And this, as long as it's within the bounds of the Sharia, is something that is praiseworthy, a praiseworthy competition to do good. And a jealous, a jealousy that you don't want to take away from that person, but you want to emulate them or be better than them in doing good deeds. And then he also mentioned that the person, uh, when, when it becomes medmum and hated, is when this characteristic, uh, it, it's the hasid. That you want that bliss, those ni'mah, those ni'am to be taken away from the individual. Look at him. He's got such a nice car. I hate that he has that car. I hate it. Oh, it burns me up. And I hope he gets a flat tire. And I hope this and this. I hope it has an accident. It doesn't hurt him, but I hope his car is taken away. Or I hope, oh, he got a scratch on his car and the person rejoices on it. All of this is things away from Islam. These are all characteristics which are evil characteristics. They're characteristics. This is a type of jealousy and hasid which is uh, hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hated by Islam. Then he mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala, when it falls short of the, the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set, meaning it, it fall, falls short of where it should be, the balance. And when it's considered something that is hateable, uh, that is hated, and uh, it's in the situation where the individual has is totally careless about any kind of good. Oh, so-and-so is doing good deeds. The person is totally uh, careless about it to where they have no aspirations to do good. They have, There's no competition uh, of wanting to do good. Said it's just like they're carefree and they, it's almost that they don't care about anything. So this is being too weak with regards to having some sort of competitiveness in doing good deeds. The jealousy, uh, and maybe they're probably in English is another term that might be more appropriate because jealousy usually has a negative connotation to us. But that you have a kind of healthy competition for doing good deeds. When a person has none of this, then they've belittled this characteristic and they've become weak and it perhaps can make them so that they have no uh, no um, sense it weakens their aspirations. It makes them weak and striving to do better and do good deeds. Ayal Ahbab. Then Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, when he said, Jealousy is not allowed except in two situations. A man whom Allah has given wealth and he gives him authority to spend it in his cause. And a man whom Allah has given knowledge and he fulfills his obligations with it and teaches it to the people. And this is collected in Bukhari. I, uh, then he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, this is the type of jealousy that is considered competition. Whereas the, where the jealous one seeks to be like the one he is jealous of. Not the type of jealousy which is actually ignoble, where the jealous person desires the bounty bestowed upon the one he is jealous of to be removed. Ayol Ahbab, I don't think that needs any explanation. It's, we've already talked about it and Shaykh al-Islam sufficiently explained it. That we want, but just as a recap, very briefly, that we want, if you have this kind of competitive jealousy, or when it becomes a good characteristic, is if it encourages you to do good deeds. If you see, for example, some brothers and sisters are bestowed wealth, the law has favored them, they strove, however they obtain their wealth, hopefully in a lawful matter, manner, that Allah has favored them with that rizq. And you see that they're also a person who spends it in good. So then you wish to have wealth like them, so you could spend like them. Or, the other example, we see many of our scholars, and we, and, and we see ulama. And we see that Allah has favored them with knowledge. As the Prophet wasallam said, Man khayran, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. So you see that some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is favored with real fiqh fi deen. That they, under, they have knowledge. You see that ilm. And that fiqh, they understand the issues. They come off their cap, they come off cap, so to speak. They, you know, they've memorized the nasus, 
and they can they don't need papers like this and they don't need it's up here and it's in here more importantly it's in here than up here meaning the memorization as Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan Hafidullah Ta'ala mentioned about those people who are like the Khawarij, some of them that have memorized, or those people who make a lot of tibdi of their brothers, they consider them, some, some of them have memorized a lot. But that real fiqh, that real understanding, they were not blessed with. And it can be a deception. He said, Qala Allah, Qala Rasul, he's giving you hadith. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's giving you this, he's giving you this. But his implementation, the heart is not clean. And he's not practicing it. And he's causing more damage than good. So that's not what we're talking about, ayyul ahbab. We're talking about the one who Allah is favored with knowledge, those ulama and those, those students of knowledge that are practicing what they preach. Allah has favored them and given them status when they didn't even want status. Allah raises them up. Why? Because they're known for practice. They fear Allah. They, they, they pray in the night. They cry to Allah and they do good deeds and they spread khair. Ayyul ahbab. Those people we, we become jealous with in a healthy way that we want to be like them. We want to be like them. We wish that we had knowledge like them, to practice like them, and to implement the religion like them, and to spread that knowledge and gain the ajr. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, those things about those three things which are going to benefit you, that are going to uh, be with you after you go in the grave. All of us are going in the grave. All of us are going to be in this ground. The Prophet ﷺ said, That when a person dies, their deeds are stopped except three. Sadaqa jariya, continuous charity. Alm, yuntifabi, or yuntifabi, knowledge that people benefit from. Or a righteous child who supplicates for him. May Allah bless us with all three of those. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah forgive us and protect us from being covetous and jealous of others to the extent that we want, and, and especially for dunya, for worldly matters, and that we want to see their blessings taken from them. May Allah protect us from that. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.